this is going to be a verse by verse in Romans chapter 8 on what you get as a child of God. There's some things that you get as a child of God, and we're just going to go over a few of those that we see in these few verses, verses 16 through 27. Number one, as a child of God, you get blessed assurance. Romans 8, 16 says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. If you're saved, then you are sealed unto the day of redemption, according to Ephesians 4, 30. And that sealing is by the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So as a child of God, I have assurance. You can lose assurance, but the Bible is clear that you can know that you're saved. 1 John 5.13 says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And something that would be hard for me to do is to sit under a person who didn't know he was going to heaven. I don't want to sit under a preacher or teacher that is unsure if he's going to heaven because he thinks he can lose his salvation. But that's the case for many Christians today. They're sitting under a man who couldn't tell you 100% where he's going when he dies. And by their belief, one Sunday morning he could be up there preaching and in their eyes he's living right and he's meeting a certain standard and if he died in that state then he would go to heaven and then the next Sunday maybe he backslid all week and then got up there and he wouldn't be going to heaven in their eyes but that isn't Bible doctrine you can know that you're saved you can know that you're going to heaven and once you're saved you're saved you're eternally secure and the Holy Spirit will bear witness with your spirit that you're saved. He's in there in your body going contrary to what your flesh wants to do. And that is how I know he's in there. There's something in me that is contrary to the flesh. And that's the new man. The spirit's in there. Uh, he's, he's fighting the flesh. Uh, my spirit is born again. The moment you got saved, your spirit was born again, your soul saved. The, the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ is in you. You have Christ in you, the hope of glory. And he bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. So as a child of God, I have blessed assurance. And number two, something I have as a child of God is I have something waiting for me on the other side. Romans eight seventeen says, And if children than heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with them, that we may be also glorified together. Every Christian automatically has an inheritance the moment he is born again. You have been adopted into the family of God and you are you are an heir. Jesus said in John fourteen two, in my father's house are many mansions. So I have a mansion up there waiting for me. 1 Peter 1, 3 through 4 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. So I have an inheritance reserved in heaven for me, waiting for me. And it's an unconditional gift. And it's a lot better than anything I can get down here. I'm trying to set up treasures in heaven. I'm looking for that blessed hope. I'm looking for things above. I've got my affection on things above, not on things on the earth. It's a lot better than any retirement plan you have. It's a lot better than any temporary vacation where... You go on vacation for a week and then it's over and you spend all that money and it's just gone. It's not there. All you have is a few pictures. You got a few pictures and little memories and those memories just get a little bit more foggy as time goes on. 
but I have an inheritance reserved for me in heaven. But there is also an inheritance I have to earn, which has nothing to do with my spot in heaven. Romans 8, 17, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Now notice the phrase, if we suffer with him. And that is a condition. To be joint heirs with Christ, we have to suffer with him. Second Timothy 3.12 says, All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Second Timothy 2.12 says, If we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us meaning he will deny us our reign with him in the 1,000-year reign. We will still go into the kingdom. Uh, no Christian will be uh, disallowed from going into the kingdom, but we won't be ruling over cities if, if we don't suffer with him here. So as a child of God, you get assurance, and you get an inheritance. Number three, as a child of God, I'm going to get a Superman's body. As a kid growing up, you may have looked up to Superman and all those comic book characters, but those guys are nothing but a counterfeit for the real glorified body you're going to get at the rapture. All the transhumanism stuff today and these scientists and rich men wanting to make themselves immortal through adding, you know, the robotic stuff to their bodies and thinking they're going to live hundreds of years by all that technology. They're just trying to get that glorified body without coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm going to have a Superman's body. And that's why the old preacher said, I'm going to leave like Superman and come back like the Lone Ranger. I'm going to be able to walk through solid objects. I'm going to be able to appear and disappear at will. I'm going to be able to go straight up through the sea of glass in heaven. And I won't have to worry about holding my breath as I go through it. I'm going to be able to go straight through whatever's between the earth and heaven. I'm going to be able to stand in front of God Almighty and not be burned to death by looking at Him. Romans 8, 18 and 19 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. The sufferings that we face down here will not compare to the glory of God. The sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. We are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. I'm waiting to get a new body that will show my salvation on the outside. Literally. Uh, right now, if I'm walking down the street, you can't just look at me and say, Hey, he's saved. Because you can't see inside me. You can't see the new creature inside if you just see me walking down the street. However, I, however at the rapture, I'm going to see the redemption of my body. I'm redeemed. My soul is saved. My spirit's born again, but my body's dead. And I'm waiting for God to quicken it. And then you can fruit inspect me by my outward appearance. And any man can judge my salvation at that point for sure because he's going to know I'm saved. I've got a glorified body. I'm going to be walking around in the kingdom with a glorified body. All the people from the tribulation and people born in the millennium that don't have glorified bodies, they're going to look at me and know that I'm a child of God. That's a benefit of getting in right now because you're going to get a glorified body. You're going to be walking around in the kingdom in a glorified body. Romans eight twenty and 21 says, For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath rejected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. The Lord said to Adam in Genesis 3.19, For dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return.
And if I don't make it to the rapture, that's true for my body because my body's just going to be in the dust. If I die right now, I'm going back to the dust. But at the rapture, I'll be delivered from the bondage of corruption. Romans 8.22 says, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And that's because the whole creation even suffers because of the sin of man. It's groaning with volcanoes and earthquakes and tsunamis and tornadoes. But the Lord's going to make the earth new. Uh, he's going to redo everything at when the millennium starts. And then after that, later on in the future, there's going to be a new heaven and, the, and a new earth. Romans 8.23 says, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. We are the first fruits to receive the new birth. And we groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. And the phrase to wit is a legal term which means something like, that is to say, so when Paul says waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body, he is saying something like waiting for the adoption, that is to say, the redemption of our body. So to, to wit isn't an outdated phrase. There's people that still use it today. And don't go correcting the Bible just because you, you think that it's outdated. Just keep the words in there like they are. And if people have a hard time understanding them just explain to them what, what the words mean don't change the bible but we are waiting for the redemption of our body i'm redeemed but my body isn't yet i'm waiting for a new one i'm waiting for a superman's body so as a child of god you have blessed assurance you have an inheritance waiting for you and you're getting a new body one day and number four you have a sure hope uh, one thing's for sure. I know the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back to get me. I know I'm going to heaven. I know I'm saved. I know the Bible's true. Everything God says is true. He's trustworthy. Romans 8.24 says, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Now notice it says, For we are saved by hope. And that has to do with the salvation of the body, not the soul, as we've already talked about. Your soul's already saved. Your spirit's born again. But your body needs to be saved. We're waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. If we have already seen this hope, if Jesus has already come back, then it's not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? We've not seen it yet. Romans 8.25, But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. We are patiently waiting, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our hope is a no-so hope, not a I hope so hope. The fact that I'm saved and going to heaven with a new body one day is just as sure of a fact as the fact that you are listening to me talk right now. But next, what else do you get as a child of God? Number five, you get power in prayer. Romans 8.26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So the Spirit helpeth our infirmities, and that is our tribulations and troubles. The Lord loves us so much that He gets burdened for us when He sees us going through something. So the Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Romans 8.27 And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Lord knows our heart. And in 1 Samuel it says, He looketh on the heart. He knows the real you more than you do. And he knew you were going to commit a certain sin that you didn't even know you were capable of committing. 
Uh, Hebrews 7.25 says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. And Romans 8.27 said, Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Lord Jesus Christ makes intercession for the saints. He's our go-between. We don't need a priest to talk to God for us. We don't need a psychic to talk to God for us. All we need is the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 2, 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. But this has been verse by verse in Romans 8 on what you get as a child of God. And if you're not saved, you're not a child of God. Many people going around saying, well, we're all just God's children. We're all in God's image. And that's a flat-out lie because if you've not been born again, you're not a child of God. The Bible actually calls you a child of hell, a child of the devil, a cursed child. Uh, you're not a child of God if you're not saved. And if you're not saved and you died right now without the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you would open your eyes in hell, in torments. And you will burn just like the rich man's been burning for thousands of years. But if you want to be a child of God, the only way you're going to do this is to come to the Lord Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are and believe on Him and what He did for you on the cross to pay for your sin. The Lord Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and He was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. He died by shedding His blood. He died for your sin. And if you want to be saved, then come to Him now the best way that you know how and believe on Him and Him alone to save you. That's the only way you're going to become a child of God. You're not going to become a child of God by living right. You're not going to become a child of God by doing good things and going to church and all this other stuff you have to believe the gospel but i hope you'll believe and be saved before it's too late